Discovered Aboriginal camps uh, fringe the current sea level. Uh, mythical sites were all scattered at places that have never been flooded, therefore overlooking the landscape, whether it was a rift valley or a gulf. If the campsites were established before the flooding, they would be placed on the rim of a ridge overlooking the valley too. Point Lowly, for example, is atop top of a hill. Uh, the scientific theory well explains the change of uh, terrestrial habitat into a marine one and otherwise. This happened several times. The humans could only observe this change after the last ice age. Although there is not enough archaeological evidence to suggest that the camps were established before the flooding, it is possible that the Aboriginal people actually observed the event of flooding whether it was witnessed from casual hunting and mythical or ceremonial visits, or from camps established for longer periods, is a question for the further archaeological research. And I would leave it you know, at this point. So are there any questions, please? Yes? Yes, uh, yeah, the only freshwater source uh, was basically at Point Lowly uh, at the dunes um, <clears throat> on top of uh, Viruna Bay. Uh, then there is some, some water at um, Douglas Hills, uh, very little. Uh, and then the only other source of water uh, is at Hammock Hill. So, so the, the tribe visiting the area was very small anyway. So it was probably uh, two families. Uh, and uh, they didn't stay for a longer period anyway. Uh, the theory is that they came down south, uh, you know, in uh, for summer, um, and then uh, in the winter they returned back to the um, Salt Lakes, to the desert. So yeah. And and you saw on the map basically that uh, the most of the archaeological sites so far discovered, you know, basically copy, you know, the best uh, scenic part of the area which we see now anyway. So. Um, there could be, yes, yes, that's, that's quite open. If you look at the, um, the sites, archaeological sites here, they just copy the, uh, the shoreline with a few exemptions. Hmm. Well, we talked about the importance of the Maroota Bay. Um, have you actually done any actual research in there? Because it's sort of all its centers now. Yes. Nobody else has access to yes. it. Um, I, I've listed in, in my paper, I actually listed, you know, all the sources I used. Um, um, one of them was the archaeological research um, ordered by, by Santos uh, in the 80s. Um, unfortunately, no one else, you know, did anything, uh, any research, because I have to say that, um, you know, South Australian Museum or any uh, university else are not uh, in archaeological uh, research interested in this area. Um, so, uh, Biruna Bay was probably strategically placed uh, facing south. Um, um, and uh, I, I can't really explain that anymore as, as I presented. Yes, please. Can you um, tell us something about the shingle reef that goes along there? Um, yeah, that, that's part of that, um, of that, um, that geological development, you know, when, when I mentioned in general terms before. Um, uh, those, uh, those pebbles were actually part of the hills and they were actually pushed down to the, uh, to the sea, you know, and then the, the sea actually pushed them back. So, so there were two forces, you know, and that's why we've got something which, which looks like, like a base for the railway. Um, so this, this more actually explained, you know, uh, I believe, you know, in, in, the, in those signs, you know, uh, as a phrase in a trail if you go there. Yes, Barry? Yeah, uh, those, those shingle ridges, uh, but uh, as you say, uh, the uh, uh, pebbles came down, and uh, because the, uh, the tide was uh, a lot higher, you know, it was three mm -hmm. meters higher, and there was a lot of uh, easterly winds coming across, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I've just read a bit up now, and, and, yeah. and that's what yeah. uh, pushed it back up and made it so high. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's correct. But that's just only a detail, you know, with, with all the, you know, what, what actually happened. So um, with this, um, so when I mentioned Kultana Range, you know, it was much higher, obviously. 
So this is the end of, of the range, you know, which goes down and in here. So, so if you can imagine, you know, so, so this, this was overlooking the belly, which, which is here. Um, and um, then, you know, the, before the actually developed, the, the Flinders ranges was, were um, lower than, than, uh, than this part, but it that didn't really matter. And uh, when we talk about uh, the actual uh, foreshore now, um, so, so yeah, there, there is plenty of, uh, <clears throat> um, like a local archaeological, uh, 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 I mean, not archaeological, <clears throat> geological uh, sites, but they were uh, uh, playing like a minor uh, part in, in that what I try to, you know, paint as a big picture because we, we talk about the landscape which is, uh, you know, almost three billion years old. So, um, so that's one of the beauties, you know, we have, we have got here. We actually walked uh, on the landscape, you know, which, which changed, obviously. Uh, we, are, we are not strictly talking about 2.7 uh, billion years ago, but we certainly talk about a very, very long time. So. Um, and so what about the implications for um, you know, climate change, like the worst case scenarios in terms of uh, spending off? Is it, you know, particularly under, under threat or like there's a lot of low-lying areas and, and both plants? Um, I have to say that um, when you look at that, um, at that graph, you know, that was about the ice ages, you know, in the past, you know, 130,000 years ago, we are inevitably going into another ice age eventually. Yeah. So, which actually means that uh, we start losing water. And uh, what may happen uh, if we follow the pattern that was, you know, those thousand years ago, so uh, the, the Spencer Gulf will become a valley again. So that just following the pattern, you know, which, which we had before, you know, thousands and thousands of years ago. So it's really hard to say, you know, like in a, yeah, we live, what, average 50, 60 years, you know? Um, so we, we can hardly predict, you know, <laughs> in our lifetime. Well, yes. Um, yeah, that's, that's a bit of a problem uh, because um, the Malkari Pangala virtually disappeared, you know? So, so then we had, we had Bangala, which were pushed down to Port Lincoln and eventually headed around Port Lincoln in the camps. Then we had few Bangala, you know, at um, Iron Oak. Meantime, the Kokata were pushing in as well, so they already started um, you know, in, intermarriage, you know, within the tribes, they would never, uh, you know, did that before. But that was a desperate situation. As a result, you know, now, for example, those people were transferred from um, Air Peninsula to York Peninsula. So absolutely different. It's like, you know, you go to Finland, you know. And um, so as a result, you know, these people lost, you know, their identities, you know. And, and a lot of these dreaming stories, you know, we don't have the originals. We have got just a bits of pieces from Andiamatana, Kokata, and Bangala, you know, uh, all together. So, so that's that part of the story, unfortunately. Um, do you, do you, can you say anything more on the uh, singing to the sharks? Um, uh, I didn't want to mention that. I thought you may go to the museum <laughs> so, and see it, you know, by yourself. So. Um, yeah, well, basically, what uh, I don't know. All right. So, I, um, so when when you see this um, in this area, um, so that uh, no, it's actually here. It's actually here. Um, uh, well, they, 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 there was a tradition which was recognised uh, by uh, the other tribes, also from the other side of, of the Gulf, you know, from from York Peninsula, and all these tribes always mentioned that Point Lowly is a place of the sharks. Um, so whether it was in general terms or they even, you know, mentioned, you know, this singing to the sharks. Um, now, according to the Bangala, what happened in Viruna Bay was that um, they performed this ritual that um, uh, the women were standing on the beach um, in a row uh, with the clap sticks, you know, and uh, stomping the ground. Uh, the men were on, on the heads, you know, and they both were actually singing um, towards the open ocean. Um, Never, it has never been mentioned whether it was uh, done at daylight or um, at, whether it was, you know, um, during the night, so using bonfires as well. 
and uh, they called it singing to the sharks because um, uh, they believed, you know, that the sharks actually, because of the singing, were bringing the fish towards the bay. 